Hi folks, welcome to the Writing with Sandhya episode. This is Poetry Month. Uh, it's exciting and we're listening to various poets. And I thought that my friends and I can also share our poetry with you. Uh, we have recently been published in a safe and brave space, published by the Garden of Neuro. Uh, the Garden of Neuro is a wonderful organization uh, for women. And if you're a writer, a poet, or uh, any kind of uh, you know, person who would like to express herself, uh, do check out the Garden of Neuro online. The link is it will be in the uh, description below and you can uh, sign up if you like. Uh, there are various anthologies that will be coming out this year and we were all uh, lucky and fortunate to have been published last year. And what was particularly interesting to me is uh, not only was I published in this, epi in this anthology but also my sister my two best friends from high school, uh, one of my friend's sisters. So, you know, all of us who are really close and grew up together. And you'll find them all in this episode. So this is very special to me uh, in many ways. Uh, three of my poems have been accepted in the Safe and Brave Space uh, Garden of Neuro publication. I'll be reading them out to you. Uh, the first one is Kabuli Wali. Uh, it's it's called it, the literal translation is woman from Kabul in Hindi, um, and this is based on what the regrettable, uh, you know, what happened last year in Afghanistan and everyone, you know, running to flee the country. She stares in frustration at the wall of men, white robed with guns blocking her path. With tears in her eyes, she clutches her baby to her chest turns and runs down the street, only to find the barrels of a tank pointed directly at her. The smell of gunpowder is still in the air, smoke causing a hazy scream. She ducks into a lane, picks up a black robe and stumbles behind a bin, crouching, heart pounding, trying to find a way forward. She must escape, she must. She dashes across the sand to the barbed wire fence. No matter, she'll tear her way across, to the airport, to the plane, that will take her to a place of refuge. She can almost see the beacon. Can she reach it in time? Hello there. It is my absolute pleasure to be invited by my dear, dear friend Sandhya to present my poetry to you today. I'm Rena Nag, no literary genius, far from it in fact, but I'm inspired and encouraged each day by those around me to write and principally by my dear friend Sandhya. So thank you, Sandhya. Your gift to me is priceless. Having spent 23 years on Wall Street, my right and left brain have finally collided in this exuberant experience of pandemic poetry. Three of my poems were just published in an anthology of poetry and art called A Safe and Brave Space, published by the Garden of Nero. Here it is. So I'll read them to you now. The first one is entitled A Safe and Brave Space. We are 49.6% women. They are 51.4. Let's create a safe and brave space to a safe, brave world in short. 100% in this together. Together we must strive to create a space so special, free from all this pain and strife. Money, fame, fortune buys, many things we often crave. Friendship, laughter, love and like creates a space that's safe. After all, the people in our world, just like them, you and me, need a safe, brave space, a space of liberty. So ladies, let's take control. This is our moment. This is why. We prod, nudge, walk the walk and talk the talk because we are half the sky. The second of my poems is called, it's untitled. I actually didn't even know I had to give it a title. So I'm learning as I'm going along. Here goes. On my bicycle, barely a teen, I pedaled fast, I didn't want to be seen. 7 p.m., the sun dipping low. Faster, faster, I must go through darkening gullies and narrow lanes, vaulting over portholes and open drains. What was I doing out so late? 
Was I being brave in tempting fate? It's never safe for a girl on a bike to be out riding alone in the dark at night. What was I thinking? Was I thinking at all? This didn't feel safe, nor brave at all. Breathless, exhausted, I finally saw the light of my safe and brave space. I knew I'd be all right. Decades later, that ride in the night has given me a very clear line of sight. I say to you little girls, do what you might, but learn to pedal fast as you reach for those heights. And the third poem, also untitled, goes like this. I have a safe and brave space and it's inside my head. It's sometimes bruised and battered, still it gets me up and away from dread. Away from all that isn't fun, cause I can just think those awful thoughts away. I love my head, for my mind it keeps unhappiness at bay. No matter what the day or night, what's whirling there and everywhere, I get inside my head, tuck in and whisper gently, it'll all be all right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sandhya. Hi, my name is Anu Anaya. I'm a writer, poet, and more recently, because I've had one book published, I'm an author too. I'm lucky to have had three of my poems published in the anthology, A Safe and Brave Space. I will be reading out two of those for you today. The first one is called Gritsi. They hated their uncle, that sweet man who showered them with love, too much love, touchy-feely love. Mum shushed their rants. He's your uncle, she whispered. Alka began to fight him, clawed at him, screamed, kicked. He laughed. Daya kept calm, way too calm, wooden. Alka was confused. Does Daya enjoy it? At the farm, the two teenage girls draw water at the well. A dark shadow, the uncle. Alka withdraws. He follows. Daya watches, hawk-eyed, biding tongue. A swift leg shoots out, trips. Uncle in the well, screaming, gurgling. Silence. The end of a love they would not miss. The second one is called Where Night Owls Fly Free. She loved the night, the silence, that one chirruping cricket. She wandered about on the streets, the world a labyrinth of silence. Her friends, the creatures of the night, the tawny owl, the broody bat, the cat with eyes shining iridescent. She loved the night, the inkiness, inviting. She could dip a quill and write. The only sound, her footsteps on gravel, crunch after delicious crunch. She loved the night. The moon, oh, the mesmerizing moon. She was of water. How powerful the pull of the moon. The boys laughing, chattering in the corner, enjoying the night. Just like her, she loved the night. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed my poems. My claim, why do I need to feel safe? Why do I have to ask for refuge? Why do I seek to be brave? I am. Who's going to grant me shelter? Who's going to sign a guarantee? Who appointed him there? Not me. Do I not have the same rights? Do I not own the same space? I think I do. I don't need to ask for safety, for I have it. Good morning, this is Reena Patnagar from Canberra, the beautiful Australian city known for its parks and lakes. This morning, I would like to share two of my poems titled Our World and Love. Our world is about a yearning for a world where every person feels safe. And the second poem, addresses the unwavering and boundless nature of love. Our world. Imagine there's no heaven. 
the famous words of the song fill the air, urging us to think yet again, can our world unite to create a safe and brave space? A world free of greed and avarice, covetousness and jealousy, selfish endeavor and discrimination. Let us unite to design a safe and brave space for our young ones to thrive. Love. There is this feeling that lies within and grows as time goes by, an all-encompassing sentiment that's there for kith and kin. It stretches and ne'er contracts, like an unceasing ocean, a boundless affection. How truly and how truly beautiful and abstract. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Priya and uh, I'm Sandhya's sister. I want to start by saying thank you so much to Sandhya uh, for introducing us to this whole new world of poetry. Uh, I mean, I've been dabbling in it, but to actually get it published, wow. So, uh, and thanks to all the ladies at Garden of Neuro uh, who made this happen. It is so motivating, you know, when you see your stuff published uh, though we haven't seen it as yet but we will shortly um, this book is very special because uh, my sister's written in it and her uh, besties Joyce and Reena and my first babysitter Reena Bhatnagar who was forced to look after me when my sister and her buddies used to hang out and gossip together um, my first poem uh, is for my best friend, Kala, and uh, it's called About Us. Okay, so I'm putting on my old lady glasses now. About Us. I don't know how to describe 27 years and jot it down in a few lines. I don't know how to portray a friendship which brighter than the sun shines. You sat in front at school, a teacher's pet, hands raised, while a backbencher was I, avoiding the questions which left me dazed. Yet somehow a camaraderie built in the early hours before class. Laughter shared, boys discussed, not one topic allowed to pass. You traveled 8,000 miles for my wedding, forsaking a job and a dream and stood behind me all throughout so that I didn't come apart at the scene. There are so many incidents I cannot forget. The thief who stole your bike, the man who owned an MF Hussein, that silly professor you didn't like, that creepy train station at night, the first jeans I forced you to buy, that luscious wobbly chocolate cake, or that time when you know who got high. We've gone through every tough time, battled each other's critics, been there for beginnings and partings, through all lifts and kicks. My son knows who's on the phone as my voice drops to a whisper, giggling, gossiping, grumbling. Is that auntie? You laugh the most with her. There are so many stories yet to be told, countless journeys we will still face. I can't describe what you mean to me. You are my safest and bravest place. Thank you, Kala. The next one is inspired by my son. Online school has started. Little fingers tap over the keyboard. High pitched good mornings pipe in. Reedy voices sing the school prayer. Some confident, some fumbling. The day unfolds into a colourful imaginary world filled with animals, snow-clad mountains, multiplication sums and patriotic songs, moralistic stories and scientific paper boats. The ideas trip over, stumbling. Messy paint brushes and online codes, quizzes, games, mind maps, dictation, sigh and some messaging, gaming on the sly jumbling, tumbling. The pretty girl sings a song, fervently cheered on by her fans. 
the grinning boy plays his latest piano tune. Bro, that's just awesome. The gruff voiced kid shows his painting, brush stroke beyond his ears. Clapping hands, oohs and ahs, no question of grumbling. Dreams of unfinished submissions, of incomplete activities, of non-existent projects. The only reward is the smile that breaks out from the quietest. The answer which tumbles out of the unsurest. The patient pause given by the loudest. And the question asked by the shyest. This is dedicated to all the teachers who make school safe and brave. Truly humbling. The last poem is called Home. This I wrote uh, for my father, Colonel V.S. Ranganathan. Um, he provided such a safe and brave place, uh, childhood for me and for my sister. Uh, by being in the army, that was brave. And by being the selfless family man. Uh, this is for you, Appa, your uh, interesting uh, activities and uh, the way you can speak to anybody is something which uh, we all have always admired but this poem has happened because of you home a room to sleep in and call my own a mother whose caress gives comfort like no other a son Grubby little fingers that clutch my heart tight. A sister to share all the sunsets with. A husband who turns to me for strength. A niece with a heart of gold. Friends with whom I can just be free. Cousins who have shared my life. An enchanting book waiting to be read. A haunting song to sing out loud. A warm balcony overlooking the beach, lilting rain among the dark trees, all places which the mind calls home. Thank you. I hope you guys like this. This was very nerve wracking for me. This is my first recording. Uh, thank you and hope to write much more. Hi Sandhya. Thank you for inviting me to be part of your YouTube channel interviews. And uh, I would like to begin by wishing you and all your viewers a very happy new year and a happy 2022. I hope this year is a better one for all of us. Uh, just briefly to introduce myself, uh, I'm a Joyce Rufus and I'm a friend of Sandhya for the last uh, more than three decades. Uh, we are high school friends and it's not just us that share a journey, but even our families uh, have known each other for all these many years. So it's a very special bond that I share with you. Thank you also, Sandhya, for inviting me to be part of the Garden of Nuro, which is uh, such a beautiful platform for women, like-minded women, uh, to come without hesitation, feel safe, and share their talents and share whatever they have to bring to the table. Uh, I'm privileged, too, to have three of my pu poems published uh, in the book that was uh, titled and uh, mentioned earlier in the interview. I'd like to begin by reading my very first uh, poem, and that is titled Serenity. So Serenity is uh, written which with when I was going through a bit of a hurly-burly and a bit of a topsy-turvy bus hustle and bustle in life. And uh, it is the persona in the poem is actually looking out for serenity and tranquility and uh, silence. And uh, finally, um, the big mes message is just that the in search of serenity, in search of silence, in search of stillness. So I'll just read the first poem to you now. I look for thee in all I do, in sunset and the morning too, in gentle murmur of the breeze, in swaying passion of the trees. I look for you in all I see, in rolling waves full of glee, in sweet fragrances of a flower in every moment of every hour. I look for you to cheer me on. When I'm down and forlorn, I look in gentle sounds and sighs all around me, days and nights. And when I find thee, I know how, amidst chaos, the flowering bough bends low to touch the sparkling stream, quiet, calm, unfazed, like a stream. 
So, uh, you know, I'm no poet, but uh, as I said, most of these lines were written uh, in tranquility, in, in reflection. So the next poem that I'm going to read to you is titled A New Dawn. The main idea of this poem highlights the inner strength that every woman possesses. And uh, in her ability to make a change, it does evoke a self-belief towards the end of the poem. A new dawn, his deafening silence, his unreachable heart, his cold indifference, his callous disregard, were all so real. Her warm, sincere feelings, her fervent desire, her sentimental cries, her heart full of fire, were all so real. The human encounter she should have known to obey and be silent, not try to move stone. Her crystal dream shattered, imagined in youth, as shards lay scattered, reflecting the truth. She picked up her cases, though confidence was low, looked straight at her nemesis, walked out of the door. Fate held her hand tightly. Destiny too took care. On Pegasus she soared, her spirit repaired. And uh, the third and the last poem is pretty much has a universal message. Uh, it was a poem that is uh, dedicated and written in reflection uh, of the two years that have gone by where all of us as a world community have struggled to uh, make things move. So the poem is titled Slow Down and it's dedicated to 2020 and 2021. Life had to lock down, humanity slow down to recharge and regrow, to replenish melted snow, to rethink relationships, to restore friendships, to rest and stop racing, to lend and stop taking, to heal and not hurt, to give, not subvert, to love and not lust, to embrace, not distrust, to stop and to stare, to feel and to share, to subdue our big ego, to forgive and let go, to dream and watch sunset, to allow nature some rest, to count our many blessings, to ensure we've learnt lessons, to appreciate, not strive, this wild and precious life. Thank you all for listening to my poems and wishing everyone a really good 2022. And thank you, Sandhya, once again, from the bottom of my heart for inviting me and giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts. Bye. Words, they come easy. They are my refuge, my strength. Blow away the storm. So those were some of the beautiful poems from A Safe and Brave Space, an anthology of art and poetry published by the Garden of Nero. Uh, there are a lot more poems and even artwork uh, in that book. I'll include the link uh, from where you can purchase the book uh, down below. And also the link to, of course, the Garden of Neuro that we've all spoken about. I've shared in the beginning that what's especially emotional for me is that a lot of my loved and dear ones are part of this anthology. I do want to thank Anoop for introducing me to the garden and thereby, you know, for giving me the opportunity to be part of this anthology. I'm so happy that my sister Priya is part of this and uh, my best friends from high school, Rena and Joyce. I uh, Joyce's sister Rena, Patnaga. And it also comes to you globally from, you know, from India, from the US, from Australia. So it was truly a global work and uh, such beautiful pieces of poetry. Uh, you know, there are lots of other powerful poems as well uh, from Zan with a powerful voice and I want to thank Lisa Tomi for uh, uh, you know doing a poetry workshop and really speeding us through um, this book and getting it out in an incredibly uh, fast uh, pace and out the door very quickly. I want to thank Susan Bradley uh, who is the founder of the Garden of Neuro for giving us this wonderful space where we can all thrive and flourish. I've also interacted with me, Nancy Arviso and Lisa Bolin and others. Uh, some wonderful artwork in this book from Katlina, from Priyanka Chaudhary, Seema Mishra, so many others. So uh, I am looking, I'm hoping to get the book in my hands soon and I hope some of you do as well. 
So thank you for joining.